assignment, and this is breaking the statement of the web of assembly. This is one of those technologies which is it's it's supported. In fact, we'll see later it's already supported by four major browsers. It exists, it actually works. There are companies using it and there are very interesting projects using it. However, it's not in use enough to be seen on job listings, to be seen on for on forums, sorry. The tooling around it is a bit iffy still, but then again it's the web so we're used to that. Um, and I thought it would be a very, very ripe talk, both for me to learn exactly what it is and to like, get rid of the mysticism around it, as well as to share to all of you what exactly it is. So, this is me. Oops. Usually, slides change. There we go. This is the one I'm signing. This is Scott, I'm a developer, I also met the people in software and the dogs. So, the talk outline. I'm going to talk about what is WebAssembly or WASM, as you can get, I'm going to talk about its characteristics, its history, um, where, where, where it exists, why it exists. I'm going to explore an example, so this I'll be opening up my Visual Studio Code and showing you examples of a kind of world it looks like, and actually see it running to run. And I'm going to add two numbers together, maybe a trivial example, but it's like a bit of a more complicated hello world, because anyone can open the console. Maybe addition is actually something more useful. WASM is a compile target, so I'll explain this more in detail. Reasons to write it, like what problems does it solve? There is no shortage of projects which, ex which exist just because. But what problem does it actually, does, does it actually solve that I should be interested in using it? Um, notable projects, so the reasons to write it are breaking the speed limit using languages other than JavaScript, which is a hot topic. Notable projects using WASM, notable companies using WASM, and I'll conclude with just a few thoughts about why WebAssembly is such a big opportunity for a good number of people, and obviously not just front-end developers. So what is it? This is taken copy-pasted from their website. I'm going to read through it and then I'll break it down. WebAssembly, abbreviated WASM, and the fact that it's not you might see it written in all caps, but it will write acronyms in all caps. As it is an abbreviation, so that's why it's written WASM on the W caps. It's a binary instruction format for a stack based virtual machine. It is designed to support the target for compilation of high level languages like C, C, Rust, enabling deployment of the web for client and server applications. I find this a bit odd because I don't consider C, C, and Rust to be high level languages. But clearly, at least, it just means higher level than was in itself. So, let's break it down. Binary instruction format. It means that the end product is actual machine code. If you were to look at it in a text editor, you get a jumble of characters that you can't understand. It's zeros and ones. It's literally machine code that's going to be run. By the way, if anyone has any questions, feel free to raise your hand. It's a stack. It runs in a stack-based virtual machine. Let's start from the end. It runs in a virtual machine. This isn't a virtual machine that you'd expect, like, you have a Windows machine, then you run Linux inside a virtual machine, although it's the same concept. This is more like it gets its own little world sandbox, let's say in a browser, and it runs within that. It interacts with other specific APIs that are available to its host. In this case, it would be browser APIs, for running in the browser. And it doesn't need... Uh, um, it is not written for specific uh, browsers, it's not written for specific operating systems. As long as the operating system or the browser or the environment runs this virtual machine, it will run. This is very much, was a very at all, there might remember Java being as the right ones from anywhere, because Java uses the same process, runs inside its own virtual machine. Stack based, which means it uses a stack, meaning that instructions are stacked on each other and popped, we executed it. More computer science and actually useful information. So it's a portable target for compilation of higher languages, meaning that it is a language which runs, yes. However, it is a target for compilation of higher level languages. We will see later how, even though it is a binary instruction format, it actually has a textual format that we can see and we'll take a look at. But it is this textual format that then your tool chain 
translates the binary that allows you to use a higher level language. The examples include C, C, Rust, Rust. I'll be showing examples in Go as well. But I was looking at a list earlier. There's even examples for TypeScript, for C Sharp, so even for Java and JavaScript. There's varying levels of support. The main ones are C, C++, and Rust. Go as well. We'll get to that more later. But basically, I write my code in C, and it gives me a well. So we have done a compilation step there. We've moved from a high-level language to a lower-level one. And it's deployed on the web for server client side applications. The web being the whole ecosystem we have around HTTP, HTML, browsers, browser APIs, JavaScript. It's built for this ecosystem. It is not the only ecosystem it can exist in. However, that was its first thing. And I say first thing because it was only recently reached MVP status or version 1.0. And they already have plans that, yes, you can write it to run it on a microcontroller if you want. It's not what it's designed for, but the way it was designed allows you to do that. So, characteristics. Let's run through these quickly. Size and load time efficient, which means that it doesn't have a compounded memory access. In fact, it's actually the next one. It's memory safe and sandboxed in some execution environment. You can't like go access the operating system if it's running in its own sandbox inside the browser, you won't easily, by design, secure by design, you won't easily be able to access memory that you aren't allocated. You won't be able to access some operating system APIs you aren't given access to. It executes at near native speed. Near native speed is fancy words for uh, faster than what we're used to. At least with JavaScript or whatever. But more like, it's like we're going closer to the method. We're cutting out the middleman, we're cutting out just in time compilation, and we're going straight to the method. And it's part of the open web platform, again, browsers, known APIs, JavaScript, and so on. It can access browser functionality by the same web APIs used by JavaScript. So anything you might want to do with a browser, such as access the camera, get the location, I believe even HTML5 has push notifications. All these things, as long as you give it access, it can access it. It's debuggable via a textual representation, which means it's not just compiled to machine code and then you know you screw it, it doesn't work. Just keep trying to change it. No, you can actually enter a debugger and show an example later if you have time. And it's a standard maintained by W3C, so it's not something coming from one company, but rather it's a standard maintained by companies working together to provide a single standard, because that's always where better ideas come from. So, the, it has a number of precursors. One is PNACL by Google, started in 2011. NACL stands for Native Client, which was Google's attempt to run native code within browsers, specifically designed for Chrome OS. And then they believe they open sourced it and other browsers could implement it, but um, since it was coming only from Google, the, the reaction is usually why should I write my browser to have support for my competitor's solution? This is why at least Wesleyan has seen much more support because it's an open standard maintained by a committee of several companies, and several companies contribute rather than just one. The other is as in JS by Mozilla, which was basically a counter claim by Mozilla to try and speed things up. The idea with this is that you grab JavaScript code existing it and you try and compile it beforehand instead of compiling it on the fly and running it and hoping it works. You basically compile it, get the machine code, and you optimize it. Supports that exist for SMJS, but both of these projects have basically admitted in a way that they are they have been superseded by WebAssembly at this point. So what environments is WebAssembly designed to run in? The image. So it was spoiler alert. So we had the web, it was the web. Um, uh, client side, so embedded in browsers, and these are the four major browsers which have WebAssembly support already. They are not the only ones which matter, because there are other browsers, but for the most part, we're there. So wait, there's already a kind, can I use? Um, uh, you can go in and see specifically for specific browsers, whether there's support or not. I believe it's either they have support or they don't. There's no partial support. And then there's also their own docs, which explain why. So, it can also be run wherever a JavaScript virtual machine is present. 
This means it can be run in Node.js, for example. And I believe if you're brave enough and you find a know, microcontroller and the V8 engine, you can probably run your web assembly there as well. Um, so server side node and anywhere really eventually. The fact that it's a compiled target as long as you can build support for its virtual machine, it means that you can run it. So if you want to run it in your car, on your watch, whatever rocks you want, then it floats your boat. So why? So via feature testing, which means that in the post MVP stage you're interested in adding feature testing, which is basically having that has feature function. So you can in your code you can write, does this Platform that I'm running on have the feature of a webcam. If yes, run this. If no, run this. It's a very similar to how we polyfill in, in the web, where does this browser have this function? Yes, then okay, run this. If not, let me change this function to do something and then go ahead and do it. And the other is via dynamic linking, where rather than statically linking, but at the compile stage, when you grab your code, compile it, and check it out, and it has everything it needs. You can specifically tell the code to expect a library at a certain location. In this case, if you have, let's say, a library which leads to webcams, it could be in a PC, it could be a laptop, or it could be in a car. You know, what type of video calls in your car. Um, but yes, so then you dynamically link to the library which handles the webcam. Okay, so now I'm going to explore an example. As you know, show me. Before you go into the examples, uh, are there any drawbacks on this? Uh, what? Any drawbacks? Any reason why we shouldn't use it? Because I didn't see any. That comes later. Okay. <laughs> You're ahead of me. So, this is the test exploit example. First, I'm going to do a test lab. I'm going to do a hello world, it's not kind, because obviously, why not start with that? Then, I'm going to add two numbers together on the server side, also to show how rather than running a full application, I'm going to run a fun to create a function, export it, and just run just that function within a JavaScript context. Then I'm going to go back to the garage and look under the hood to look at what it looks like in a binary format and textual format. Maybe if we have time, I'll take a look at the debugger. And then I'm going to go on the racetrack, which is the, I think the the juiciest part of the assembly, which is can we really how 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 much faster is it really, and why you know, why is it so much so, this is where the work starts. Now, this is going to be a bit awkward because I don't have my code here. But, and all of these examples will be available online after the talk. Uh, let's go to Hello World. Let's start with the work starting with client side. Now, we have these files here. I have pre-compiled a hello world WASM file because why? Because we'll actually compile it in the next example. Um, I'm going to run it. This HTML is oh, it's a lot of HTML. Why? Because I'm using mscripten. mscripten is a tool chain which lets us compile C, C++, and Rust and a number of other languages to WASM. I'm not going to go into how they work because I don't know how. But basically, the compilation tool chain is not built into the language, as we'll see later with Go. Whereas Go and Go, the language itself has a tool chain to build WASM, these have a completely separate tool chain. This is also the JavaScript file that script 10 generates. Again, I'm not going to pretend to understand what's going on here. But, you know, and I'm going to run. Yeah, and script 10 also provides the ability to run its own web server and to run the to try to host the HTML and JavaScript and the WASM file for us. So, I'm going to stop talking, this shows it's working. Okay, now, let's see if I can move my browser over there. Yep. Hello, 
It's not here. Why? Because it's coming from the binary file. And it's running. And Scripton also gives us this fancy interactive console where, in fact, we've got the result here, but I wanted to show it here so that you can see it in the tools that we're used to. So that's it working now. Sorry, I have a question. Yes. Uh, but, uh, what we see on the UI on the left side is a uh, it's nothing produced by WebAssembly, so it's just a uh, no, that's all provided by okay. so that it gives you like something to run your WebAssembly in so that you can see how it's running. The later examples, I don't use it because I use Go instead. I had to write a web server five lines to just host the stuff, it's, but I even wrote the JavaScript myself, so you see a much more slim down version. Thank you. So, and, sorry, and, uh, Western file is downloaded over the network, or is it? Yes, so in fact, we have a Western, and it's in fact your, so this is something that I uh, encountered. Your web server has to support a new mind type that not all web servers support, because I believe the mind type is uh, text slash Western, application. Uh, application slash Western. Okay. And that's something that I swore. Type of assembly and then we export it. This is pretty simple to understand. 
obviously every day you look at Hello World, it was two points, displays and character codings and all that jazz. We are not going to understand the heck is going on. Are you able to write and do this file? Yes. So if I'm not going to hazard doing it now because I didn't try it myself, but if you want to, you can write raw text as it will be fine. It will run. Good luck. <laughs> it's it, it, it a So even for example, I might be able to change this to subtract. For example, I don't know the actual unless it's going to autocomplete for me. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't think it's going to let me change it. I have to oh, copy it, create a new file, and then translate it back to the binary version using the WebAssembly binary toolkit. But yes, you can write raw as if you want. Okay. So, what tools allow us to write in assembly? So, we don't want to stay writing up assembly ourselves. I mean, you can if you want, but it's going to be super tedious. So, what tools can actually help us write it? And again, this is the statement copied from their website. It's supported a fair bit for compilation. Blah, blah, blah. And compilation from a higher level language to a lower level language is not any way. It's been going on since punch cards. Punch cards is literally because we don't want to, because we have to, sorry, at the time, state exactly which bits we want to represent and which not. Then punch cards, with punch cards in binary, binary, we created machine code, which was much more readable than writing the bits manually. And then after machine code came the lower level languages, which actually does declare variables, and then we let the compiler deal with machine code, and then came the higher level languages, which let us not care about memory. So this is the cycle, the never-ending cycle, we always create programs to create programs to create programs. So instead of using Python, we can use, for example, C. And in this example, I've written some C, the Go examples come later. But I want to use C because um, it's, it was much simpler to get started and to get the and understandable example. I'm just going to add two numbers using C, and compile it to WASM, import it into a JS file, and run it as you want. Let's go. We now want to exit it, and we want and lower it in C. We're going here. We are starting with the server side. I'm sorry. Yes. <coughs> You're showing us client and server, not because they are really. No, just to, to show, show us that, that there are the environments yeah. and that, you know, we can use a web, web, we always take the front end. Okay. Now, fair enough, most of the benefits of WASM are in front end. As I'll explain later, that there's not so much benefit in back end because why? Because you can just compile your C executable and call it. But I'm just showing it because I want to show that yes, you can run it because you can buy it. Because I can. So this is an algebra that we've written C. C was actually my first language, um, somehow. And then I moved on to Java and things went down in from there. Um, uh, but it's, it's, it's super simple to understand. So you have a function called add, it returns an integer. So it's a number without decimals for those of you who don't have actual types. Um, he takes two parameters, a and b, which are also integers, and it returns a plus b. Really not rocket science. So, next stop is, I'm using, so just in case anyone doesn't know, make is, it's a, it's a tool that's available in Unix systems, it's also available on Mac, basically it lets you write like, these short build steps, so that you can forget them and just run make instead. And if you ever want to find out what you were doing two months ago, you just look into your make file. In this case, I want to call it make build. EMCC is part of the inscripted tool chain, which is basically it interacts with C and we pass it. <coughs> add function C to C. I'm going to tell it, so I want it in WASM. I'm going to export a specific function called add, and I want it as a WASM file. So make build. I'll literally just run this. 
and eventually we get a WASM file, which we could take a look at. This, unsurprisingly, is the exact same WASM file we had before. I just copied it over. And then we want to run no server.js. This is exactly the same server that we were running before. So what do we make? What do you mean you copy it over? So I copied it over from the previous example here. It's the exact same. Why? Why why did you go build the one you wrote now and see? So the server.js file is the, the server one, okay. That's what I mean. Okay. So in fact if you want to see it being built. No, no, I believe. I saw it. There, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You lost my turn. state and we can call it add. 
that is a Wiseman exported function from C, which I'm now using anywhere in my in my application. So specific specifically stuck to or tied down to run an application, I could import this anywhere into any JavaScript file and for major browsers and it runs. Okay. So back here. Oh, I have to run it in Chrome to prove the cross browser compatibility. Chrome will start here. Um, Wesson, for example, is at a point where sometimes if you try to access through certain browsers, if you use local host instead of 127.0.0.1, it won't work. So there's still these weird issues that you'll find someone from two years ago on a GitHub issue and said, fixed. How did you fix it? Oh, I just use 127.0.0.1 instead of local host. You're like, so same thing. Again, money, contact is money. 
yes, making it more complex, but if you do fast, that means that you're losing readability. And what we simply offer is an alternative. Compile directly to bytecode, not just in time compilation needed, and you can use not necessarily more readable languages, but maybe your add function or whatever your function is will be more readable in the let's say C or Go or whatever. And you don't have to mangle it and optimize it in some weird ways that might change with the next V8 engine version. So I chose a well-known computationally expensive function. I didn't have a time to do a proper real-world example, so I chose a Fibonacci sequence. Calculating this tends to be computationally expensive. It's basically adding the current number, so I start from one. The current number is the previous two numbers added together. So one and one mean two, one and two mean three, three and two mean five. So, what are we going to do? We're going to run a JavaScript version of the Fibonacci sequence generator, run a Wasm version, compare the results, and well, imagine the WebAssembly result is going to be faster. That's fine. That's what it is. So, that's what we need. Close this, close this, go to here. So, before we start that, Site for it. I'm going to use Golang for these examples, partially because I really like Go, and secondly because I want to show even how there are different languages compiling to WebAssembly and we can get the same results essentially. I want to showcase how this uh, we can use different languages. So we're going to come to benchmarking. In the meantime, we need a separate terminal. Okay, it's not good. 
a big suggestion that I, that I suggest when it comes to WebAssembly because it's still in the early stages, try to get the basics working first. And then once you have that working, move on to something a bit more complex, otherwise you tear your head out trying to get it to work. Okay, so now that works, you can go to our benchmark, which is here. There we go. Let's take a look at the source code. So you can basically ignore all of this. So this stuff that needs to run inside of assembly, but the long and short is that we're going to run this function. Fib, which takes a number. If it's less than 2, we'll return the same number. Otherwise, we'll return the previous number, minus 1, and the number before that. Add it together. So this is a recursive implementation of Fibonacci sequence. Let's go here. In this case, I'm showing, I'm going to show, but I'm just running the kind of JS. Let's just look at the next step. And here I have my JavaScript version instead. Same thing, it takes a number, well, it takes a variable. JavaScript con conveniently lets us not say that it's a number. If it's less than 2, we return n, otherwise, we return the previous one, and the one before that. I run the JS version. So in this case, so that I get it, I get a meaningful number rather than it ran in one millisecond, which is pretty hard to understand. We won't go to that in seconds. I'm running it for 200 times and I'm calculating the Fibonacci sequence from 30 downwards. So the 30 is Fibonacci number, and then I'll get the time at the end, I get the duration, and I will get it out to the DOM and write it out. So if you can after that, we do the same thing, but we're loading our WebAssembly and fetching a favorite WASM, which is this, which we have compiled. I can initialize it, because it needs to be initialized asynchronously. After that, I can run it. Same thing, 200 iterations, down to 30. I'm going to get the duration, put it out to, to uh, the DOM, and then I'm going to calculate the percentage difference and I think that the the result might surprise you a bit so stay tuned. This is the um, uh, the exciting part of the talk. We have to run this. Bad, but it's exported as fib. 
In yeah, row, it's recursing inside yes. row. So so it's recursing row. inside the What, what is the for loop for the 200 to do times? Like, it has to do it 200 times. So yeah, but that means that 200 times you cross the bridge to the once, yes, and true. then you come back. And that's the, the, the huge cost. Maybe you have to make a heavy air function inside so. to see the rubber. That's like super heavy. What? Compared to what? So like 3,000, not yeah. 20 or 30. Yeah. I might have seen these commented parts. So I basically achieved what you're saying, but differently. Oh. I wrote it iteratively instead of recursively. Mm. But I was going to say that, that if you like, do them both recursively, it's not a fair comparison because if one of the languages has a better way to handle the recursion, like if Go has some shortcut inside it, so if it was, if the result is close, I would agree with you. But it's not actually not that close if you think that it's that's the case.